I did want to say that it was a photograph that uh, I saw from my brother-in-law, who is a birder. And when I saw it, I thought, oh, that is so funny because the bird looks like it's conducting. So this is a very recent painting. It's the last one I did of the series. And so I decided to put a symphony orchestra, and it is called, it's a guest conductor of Respighi's The Birds. Hello everybody, good evening. This is my church. I'm not very religious, but this is my church. And in the fall, in December, when the Metropolitan Opera broadcasts their works, I listen to it every Saturday, and I sit and I paint like mad. Not only that, I sing, I cry, and I dance, because the opera is, affects me so very much. And so I had to do a painting of that. And I might add, I have these beautiful t-shirts of this scene. So I walk over to the next. Now this, folks, was a real struggle to do. Just the architectural and getting it in all in perspective and all these people. And aside from it being, well, the interior of the magnificent Metropolitan Opera House um, and the beautiful crystal chandelier, you can bypass all of that. If you enjoy abstract art, this is very abstract. Oh, I'm sure that looks like real people, but just there is a design element in this that is very difficult to capture, and, and I did it. Now we, now we go 3,000 miles to San Francisco War Memorial Opera House. This was done this year, and it is the uh, interior of the lobby of uh, San Francisco Opera House. Nobody was around then, so I shot it because I like the colors. I like the, the luminescence of the, the lights and the shadows. Okay, now we come to my first opera which is Manon. Now, I'm not sure whether everybody knows the story of Manon, but in the story, it takes place in France, and it's of a young girl 
who comes to Paris and becomes a courtesan. And she meets this young aristocrat. They fall in love and they live in a little apartment with a table. There's a big scene, a big aria about the table. I don't know how you pronounce it in French properly, so I won't say what the, how you pronounce it. But anyway, what happens is the a French government decides they're going to get rid of all of the prostitutes and ship them out. And so that's what happens. In this scene, you see the table, the famous table, and then desolation. And this is Manon going to desolation and her death. I have a brief synopsis of this opera, and it goes like this. Manon, task, task, such a charming young girl. And she decides to take up the world's oldest profession. Well, girl, it is either shape up or ship out. She shipped out for good. <laughs> Next, we have Tosca. Now, that's a really <laughs> a great opera. It's my husband and my opera because his name is Mario, and, uh, except he's not a painter. And um, there's a lot of intrigue into this opera, but I try to make it brief as possible. So, the uh, synopsis is an artist and an opera singer. Oh boy. <laughs> Sparks fly with jealousy. Tosca is jealousy, is jealous, excuse me, of her lover, of what he's painting, this grand photograph, a grand portrait of a uh, aristocrat. And so what happens is um, there is there's nothing but tragedy in this opera and the opera takes place in Rome and boy does it sizzle. Happy ending? Uh-uh, no way. The hero artist gets shot from a firing squad and the heroine jumps off the building while she hits a high C. End. Fini. It's all over, folks. Right, here's the next one. This is the introduction of the famous ring cycle, Wagner's Der Ring des Nibelungen. And the people that go to the ring are different than the regular opera singers or opera, I'm sorry, opera uh, aficionados. No one moves during the performances. It's like 18 and a half hours. It's a full week of opera. And so this painting is, and they're called ringheads, by the way. I am a ringhead. This is a bunch of ringheads waiting to go into the opera house. And of course, this, this guy loves New York, so he has I Love New York tattooed on his arm. So now we're going to proceed into the first opera. And I have to, I have to read this everybody, so, because uh, I wrote a lot. Okay. This is the opera to end all operas. There are four operas in this series, and the stories are so complicated that you'd be asleep and the gallery would be closed. <laughs> So I'll make this as simple as possible so you won't have any problems at all. The first opera in the series is uh, one act, and it's two and a half hours long. No intermission, two and a half hours long, folks, and you sit there, mesmerized. A nasty underground dwarf, Albrecht, steals magic gold from three Hotzi Rhine maidens. The guy messes up all the four operas. He makes a magic ring and puts a curse on it. Boy, that's all you want to know for that one. <laughs> this is the second part. The gods have this castle built up in the clouds. 
by two giants. Usually there's a bridge that goes up there or a very substantial ladder. I use the folding ladder. This is the god Wotan's hand wearing the golden ring, which he steals from the dwarf Albrecht. That's the end of Das Rheingold. This is now Die Valkyrie. It's a father versus daughter, brother and sister together again. Oh boy, <laughs> they sure are. <laughs> An underground femme fatale tangles with the god Wotan, and they have a great time together, eight children later. Dad really gets upset with um, his daughter and puts her to sleep with a ring of fire surrounding her. He also, these are part of the eight daughters that he has with the underground goddess for three, Siegfried. And this guy is so dumb and he has no fear at all. So he runs around with a live bear as a pet and knows no fear. Slay a dragon with a magic sword and goes and finds that warrior babe up asleep with a ring of fire around her. This is the last one. Gitter Demeron. Well, it's all over, folks. Everything returns to normal, and all the characters are truly burned up. Believe it or not, the story starts all over again with the gold ring, etc., etc. That's the end of the ring cycle. Now this one is Carmen, and what a babe she is. <laughs> She's got to be free, so she messes up a soldier's life by giving him a rose, and then she runs off with this guy that kills bulls for a living. <laughs> it's not over yet. <laughs> she plays cards and finds out the end is near. You see, this is Don Jose with his little gold ring in his ear. This is Carmen with the roses that she's going to give him. That's the Ace of Spades. That's her death card. And then there's a little trickle of blood because the guy stabs her. And that's the end of that. <laughs> okay. The, this is The Girls of the Golden West, a new and inspiring opera about gold miners. I mean, I think it was. I don't know. Uh, in the West. I really could not tell much because I fell asleep during this brand new opera. Of course they were mining for gold, but and guess what? They ended up at the Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> well, you can't like them all. Okay, this is Cavalleria Rusticana by Mascani and, and Pagliacci by Leon Cavallo. Very famous operas. Everybody loves to go. They're only a, a, about an hour and a half each. And so Cavalleria, here, you naughty boy and girl, look what he did to that poor innocent girl. And now she can't go to church anymore. 
because it's Good Friday. Well, he gets his, and everybody watches it. <laughs> and laugh all you want, but this clown will not stand for it. So he wipes out his partner and her boyfriend. It all happens around 11 p.m. Now, I did Roman numerals, all in black except 11 p.m. because that's when he kills everybody. So that's blood. That's good. <laughs> okay, now we have Roberto Devereaux. Devere Devere Sorry, Roberto. And even royalty cannot escape royalty. Royalty. The guy receives a blue cape to protect him from a member of the royal palace. Blue cape, his girlfriend. Oh. But have no fear. He doesn't get away with it from that one. Off with his head. <laughs> and uh, then the last is Electra. Well, we all know about Greek tragedies. And her world is off kilter. Ooh. <laughs> with her brother and mother. She is mad. Mad! Mad! And I hope this brief summary of the opera have piqued your interest if you have never seen or attended an opera before. Run right over to the Met and buy a ticket. Don't know the music? No problems. Just watch the stage and listen to those gods and goddesses on the stage singing their hearts out. And yes, they have super titles so you can understand what they're singing. Okay, thank you. Okay, this, uh, I painted this. It was the interior of the uh, San Francisco Opera House and they're chowing down during intermission. Especially this guy. Boy, he must be really hungry. <laughs> Thank you.